544 on this Monday and this morning for the first time we are hearing from the family of an 83 year old globe woman attacked and left for dead in her home last week. That woman played dead for hours. Her injuries caused her to miss her husband's funeral the next day. Just terrible. Well, her granddaughter says she now has a broken nose, needs eye surgery and has dental damage. As deputies search for her attacker, the family is now looking for the community's help. I just don't want her to worry anymore because she already lost her husband and went through this trauma and I just want her to live the rest of her life feeling safe and secure. Just heartbreaking to see those images there. If you can help with her medical or even her husband's burial expenses, we do have information up on our website right now at abc15.com. Well, communities are taking action to stop crime in their neighborhoods all across the country and right here in the valley. Several events are being planned for National Night Out that's happening tomorrow. Peoria Police and Target teaming up to educate community members. You can attend one of these sessions tomorrow night at any of the locations listed right here on your screen. They go from 530 until about 730. Well, investigators are not loving what happened at a Florida McDonald's. Take it from somebody who's cleaned McDonald's bathrooms before, folks. This is scary. The men's room was destroyed after an explosion, and now there's a manhunt underway to track down the person responsible. They have video showing a guy running away from the restaurant. The good news here, nobody was hurt in that blast. Days after that deadly accident at the Ohio State Fair, organizers are giving the all clear to 71 rides. They all passed inspection, making way for them to reopen to the public. The fireball ride behind that tragedy is still shut down. An 18 year old boy was killed. Several others hurt when that ride broke apart last Wednesday. Well, the era of the classic Coney Island style wooden roller coasters might be coming to an end as amusement parks all across the country. Just one in Georgia, the Georgia Cyclone. It made its final run a few hours ago at Six Flags in Atlanta. Two other Six Flags parks replaced their wooden coasters with steel coasters over the last few years. There's no word what's going to happen there in Georgia, though. Well, a Hawaiian woman is heading to court over trouble her family experienced on board a United Airlines flight. Shirley Yamawachi says the seat that she bought for her two-year-old son was given to another passenger. She says she paid nearly $1,000 for it. Her son was forced to sit on her lap for the final leg of their trip. There was no time to negotiate or discuss any further. The plane started rolling and we took off. The flight was almost four hours long. Neither of us were securely belted in. It was impossible. United has since apologized for that incident, saying there was a mistake when the boy's boarding pass was scanned, making it look like he was not checked into that flight. All right, switching gears here. Uber is giving you a chance to get a discount on rides, but not everyone's going to get this deal. Smart shoppers, magic time is 2 p.m. today. Ride Pass is back, and that means you can pay a flat fee on UberX rides for 28 days. Now, there are limited quantities available for the membership, and again, you can't start buying the passes until 2 p.m. today, so be sure that your app is ready and updated because the passes are going to sell out quickly. Just go to your Ride Pass section of Uber app, then buy that discount membership. And speaking of discounts, tune in at 615 this morning for a Smart Shopper deal of the day. That's going to make you jump for joy. All right. Desert Drive Time, sponsored by CenturyLink. Try that again. Good morning from the live desk here at 548. Got breaking news, got traffic. Look at all the feeds I'm watching here. The minute there is something happening in your community, I'll let you know. Looking at your CenturyLink maps here. No major problems valley wide. Things are looking great. And look at this uh, shot from one of our many ADOT cameras. Wanted to give you a look downtown. Kind of gloomy there, but I'll take it, Iris. Yeah, you know what? We've got those gray skies, especially as you look out to the west. But let me show you some of the other views around Arizona here this morning. First, the sun has made its way up, and you can see it with our Phoenix Children's Hospital Valley Cam coming up behind Camelback Mountain with some scattered clouds as we look off to the east. Similar view from our uh, Mayo Clinic Valley Cam to our north, our Cliff Castle Casino camera giving us a nice view, those scattered skies, some beautiful colors still in the sky as that sun makes its way up with those clouds up north too. And we're looking at mostly cloudy skies in spots like Flagstaff here as we start the day as well. So we're starting out with a lot of cloud cover, especially across portions of the West Valley and Western in Arizona, where we're still seeing some light showers. But for the most part, the valley looking dry as we start, just warm and muggy. Look at that temperature in Tempe, still at 90 degrees. Phoenix
Phoenix also holding on to that 90 degrees. It's 82 though in Gilbert. Good morning to you in Cave Creek. You're checking in at 84, 87 right now in Goodyear and Buckeye. You're checking in right at 82 degrees. As you look at temperatures across the state, we're waking up to upper 50s right now in Flagstaff, 72 in Sedona, in the low 90s out to our west in Bullhead City and also Lake Havasu, but 70s right now in Globe. Now, as you look at the dew points across the state, remember that's a measure of the moisture in the atmosphere. We're seeing them in the mid 60s, even 70s across central and southeast Arizona, an indication that there's plenty of monsoon moisture around. As we go through the day, I expect those dew points in the Phoenix area to be right around 60 to 65 degrees, putting us in that muggy range. And with that moisture in place, more storm chances are are in the forecast here for today. Now, as we go through the morning, best potential for some light showers and isolated storms will be west of the valley. Going into this afternoon, though, watch how those storms redevelop along the muggy on rim, the White Mountains, even in southeast Arizona. But a few could move into some of our foothills locations, and there's just a slight chance we'll see a storm or two within the immediate Phoenix metro. So overall, our storm chances between about 10 and 20 percent, with that potential kicking up to 20 percent right in time for that evening commute. So worth being on the lookout for isolated storms that could develop here going into this evening. Now temperatures this afternoon and evening will be right near average. The average is 105. I expect Phoenix to top out at 106 degrees today. 87 in Sedona, upper 70s today in Flagstaff. As you look at that seven day forecast, storm chances pretty much in play every single day. We'll talk about what the biggest hazards will be with storms that develop this week in just minutes. Okay, thanks, Iris. Just about 551. And hey, never heckle a guy with nachos, especially if it's Chris Christie. The heated confrontation going down at the ballpark. Our bodies need our bodies need the right mix of food to function right. But in this quest to be fit and healthy, some of us might be hurting ourselves at six. Why clean eating is actually concerning some nutritionists and tips to balance it out. Well, right now, a Snapchat video has the attention of police in Florida. This video, a pretty disturbing. In it, you see two teens 
using a taser on a kitten. They're then seen in the video laughing about it. Police have been searching the neighborhood where they think the video was taken, and they do plan to charge those teens with several counts of animal cruelty once they're caught. Just terrible. The hottest new app of the summer may be a dangerous breeding ground for bullying. This one's called Saraha. It's Arabic for candor and allows people to post and receive instant feedback anonymously. The developer says it was intended to give reviews in the workplace, but some people are sounding the alarm after they were flooded with negative and hateful messages. I hate you because you are too happy with your life. My makeup was not good. My hair isn't good. I'm too short. Jeez, parents should know the only way for their kids to receive feedback through this app is by downloading it. So that's why experts say it is so important to know what apps your kids have on their phones. I don't know if you call this candor or what. Uh, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie firing back at a heckler during Sunday's game between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs. Brad Joseph admits that he yelled Christie's name, told him that he, quote, sucked called him a hypocrite. He says that's when Christie turned around, got in his face, and asked if he wanted to start something. I remained calm and, you know, just said I was trying to watch the game, um, which I understand he was probably just trying to do the same thing, uh, but at the same time, he is a public official and this is America, and I think we have the right uh, to say what, say what you believe as long as it's not, you know, crude or profane. No comment from Governor Christie on this one yet. Side note, apparently Christie's son works for the Brewers. Monsoon storms are possible again today, and it could be an active week. I'll take you through that forecast day by day. Well, as you prepare to leave the house, I have your breaking news. I have your traffic alerts. We have it all from the ABC 15 Live Desk. That's the live drive out and about for you. And you know what? We are just getting started here on ABC 15 Mornings. Uh, yeah, all new at 6. Coming up, the health care battle isn't over. Now the president is threatening major cuts unless Obamacare is repealed. Then coming up at 6.30, fake green to save some green. One Valley City is testing big changes to something you've probably never really even noticed. But first, and keeping that wet and shaggy dog off your furniture, the Scottsdale person's invention that is ready to soak up some water and make bath time a whole lot easier. Easier. Thanks for watching ABC 15. Arizona's best mornings start here. Yeah, we have another full hour of news coming your way, folks, in just a couple of minutes. Keep it right here on ABC 15 Mornings.
It's the vote that shook the government, but is the health care fight over the new threat from the president? When eating right goes wrong, a health alert this morning about the eating disorder fueled by clean eating diet trends. It's a new way to save money on something you hardly even notice. We don't have to mow the grass anymore. We don't have to spend money with um, herbicides. And we're also going to save money in pavement deterioration when we water these mounded medians. I'm John Genovese coming up all new at six. How a Valley City is going green to save some green. Yeah, and that's just one of several stories all new for you at six o'clock as we say good morning. Thanks so much for starting your day here with us at ABC 15 mornings. I'm Danielle Lerner, Dan Spindle here. Yeah, a new work week and a work week where a lot of folks are getting ready to send the kids back to school mm -hmm. this week as well. The waning days of summer. Christopher Sign is at the live desk with some checks of the traffic, Chris. Yeah, my boy starting school this week. Uh, also, my friend, and we got breaking news and traffic watching all the live feeds as you look at your CenturyLink maps here. Wanted to let you know no major problem spots valley wide, but the minute something pops, I will make sure and let you know from the live desk. And monsoon 2017 turning out to be a dangerous one. In fact, the latest storms forcing 26 people. They were stranded at Bear Canyon in Pima County. You can see the crowd there uh, sitting next to the raging waters. Just after midnight, sheriff's deputies tweeting out that all of those stranded hikers were rescued. I take a look at this right here. This screenshot, the National Weather Service. Wow, confirming a tornado in my hometown area of Cochise County. It happened southeast of Tucson. It is unclear if they there was any damage from that tornado though. New storms of course also hitting the valley. Take a look at some of this damage for folks out in Glendale. Yeah, the manager of the Desert Garden Apartments telling ABC 15 they're going to have to bring in cranes folks to lift these massive trees off of the building there. At least in one case, those large trees toppled by the wind. One of them crashing right there into the side of the building. Rural Metro saying at least six units had to be evacuated for safety. A little upsetting because uncomfortable to have to figure out where to stay. And you don't know what to think for it to bring and what I need for work next day is um so in all, we're told the complex lost four huge trees, so some of that cleanup might still be underway this morning. Uh, so Iris, what can people expect for today? So this morning we're waking up to some more cloud cover in the valley and still some lingering thunderstorms to our southwest. Now, as you look at the valley metro, you'll notice that we do have a few light showers, mainly west of the Loop 303, some very light sprinkles out near Buckeye. Slight chance of a stray shower this morning, but we do have more storm chances by the time you're heading home. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. Today's high, 160 degrees though. President Trump isn't done with health care, not just yet, despite the Senate vote that killed the latest skinny repeal of the bill. He's threatening to end two government payments to Obamacare. One helps low income Americans afford policies. The other goes toward plans for members of Congress and their staff. He calls both payments, quote, bailouts. Advisor Kellyanne Conway says that the president will decide on those payments this week. And health care and health and human services secretary Tom Price says the president won't give up on this fight because he believes Obamacare is hurting Americans. We've got over 30 percent of the counties across this nation that only have one insurer offering coverage. We've got premiums up. We've got deductibles up. We've got insurance companies fleeing the market. Pinal County, one of those mentioned there last August, we told you all insurance plans were dropped. Then Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona offered up one option. Again, Pinal County. Okay, so in just two days, Amazon plans to go on quite the hiring spree. Thousands of jobs are up for grabs, but what you put on that resume could actually hurt you in the long run. So ABC 15's Allison Rodriguez, she's joining us live this morning. Allison, how bad is a little white lie on that resume? Well, you know what? Small or big, if you're busted, it could cost you big time. We're talking the entire job, not to mention a little bit of embarrassment, too. Now, a recent study found that falsified resumes, they are popping up more and more. People exaggerating skills or just straight up lying. And it'll be things like saying you worked at a place longer than you did, or you're giving yourself a title that you never even had, or maybe saying you have a skill that you don't. Now, in this study, it found 85% of employers surveyed say they did did catch potential employees exaggerating, and that was up 66% from just five years ago. Now, Mallory Hood from Vincent Benjamin Recruiting says lying or exaggerating, it's just not worth the risk. 
if you really are wanting a specific role but it doesn't require education, yet you've lied on your, your resume and says you have that education, even if it's not required for the role and they find out that you're lying, they're automatically going to disqualify you. So you can't lie, but you do want to stand out, right? So coming up, we're going to have some tips for you that you're going to want to hear, especially if you're hoping to land that next job. Reporting live in Phoenix, Allison Rodriguez, ABC 15, Arizona. Well, hundreds of fans remember Chester Bennington, the front man of Lincoln Park, committed suicide. His fans gathered last night in Tempe. Bennington, the co-owner of Club Tattoo, some of the fans got his signature tattooed on them and wrote messages of support in a notebook for his family. Fans shared stories of how much his music touched their lives. What he said in an interview was, this place right here between these ears is a bad neighborhood and I should not be in there alone. If anybody's in that bad neighborhood alone, reach out. You're not alone. Part of the proceeds of the event are going to Bennington's charity organization and to his family. Well, back in the Valley, a busy day in the courtrooms. In about two hours, a pretrial conference begins for Michael Hart. Uh, who could forget this video? Bullets buzzing past that four-year-old girl at a barber shop in Chandler. Hart is accused of aggravated assault and several other charges. Well, then at 1030, the penalty phase against Samantha Allen resumes. She is facing the death penalty in the death of 10-year-old Amy Deal. That penalty phase started three weeks ago. Her husband, John Allen, heads to trial in one week. Another child taken too soon, 11 year old Ashlyn Mike. And this week, the suspect charged in her kidnapping and death. There's a chance he's going to change his plea. In May of last year, Ashlyn and her brother were taken from the Navajo Nation in New Mexico. Her brother was able to escape, but Ashlyn was assaulted and then killed. The suspect, Tom Begay, originally pleaded not guilty. Ashlyn's father filed a lawsuit against the Navajo Nation for failing to have an emergency notification system like Amber Alert. Back in April, Senator John McCain introduced legislation to expand the notification to tribal lands. Nearly three dozen men in our state currently serving life sentences for killings committed when they were minors might get the chance at freedom someday. Last year, the Supreme Court ruled the 2,000 cases across the country could be reviewed and a life sentence adjusted based on each individual inmate. Now, this ruling does not guarantee that the review will take place. It's just an option that comes then down to the state level. The man at the center of a youth center fire is behind bars and heads back to court. Darren Beach Jr. wanted for causing the 1 in 10 fire. Uh, he was arrested on Friday without incident, facing an arson charge. It's all on camera right there. Uh, pretty despicable. His bond set at $25,000. And speaking of that fire, take a look at this. How cool is this? Phoenix Mercury star Brittany Griner presented 1 in 10 with a $5,000 check. That money, of course, is going to help that organization recover from that fire. Now, Griner got that money as part of a recent award being selected as the WNBA CARES Community Assist Recipient. Well, there has been a lot of chatter over this next project, and soon we'll know a lot more about the Desert Discovery Center coming to Scottsdale. Today, that city is expected to get a complete project proposal, and community meetings are set to begin tomorrow. We first told you about this back in early June. Some neighbors, though, not too happy about the plans to put it on the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. At least one group is trying to stop it, saying the center won't make any money and will actually end up costing taxpayers. Well, are you registered to vote? Today is the deadline before the August the 29th election. Yes, there's one on the 29th. In Phoenix, you'll elect council members to the 2nd, 4th, 6th, and 8th districts. Up in Prescott, the mayor and council seats are up for a vote as well as two propositions. Uh, early voting begins on Wednesday. Meantime, hackers are targeting election votes. Hackers got into five different voting machines this weekend at a convention in Las Vegas. They were supposed to do it to try to expose vulnerabilities. They did it. Experts haven't uh, seen these kind of things before. Apparently, it only took about an hour and a half for these guys to hack the machine over the weekend. This was at DEF CON. The hackers took machines apart, plugged computers into the ports uh, where you get those results. They say they also found universal admin pa passwords for the machines within a couple of hours on Google. The good thing to note, they could not do it wirelessly. They had to plug in good. in order to carry out that hack. Yeah. They are the dieting buzzwords, clean eating. Uh, some dietitians starting to see those words as dirty words. And actually part of a dangerous trend as well. So no Graf, she's live for us this morning. And no, hey, this feeds right into a dangerous eating disorder. 
Yeah, so it's called orthorexia. That's when people obsessively eat healthy foods. So when you pair clean eating with a perfectionist mindset, a fear of failure, and an unhealthy expectation for success, it is a recipe for disaster. The problem that nutritionists are finding with the clean eating diet is that it separates foods as good and bad, which opens the door to food shaming when really doctors want to encourage a healthy overall view of food. Orthorexia is also about so much more than just weight loss. It's a mental and emotional reaction to deeper issues. We become obsessed around how much I'm eating and being perfect about what type of food I'm eating. And then if I fall off the wagon or slip up, what happens is there's self punishment around that. I have to fast or exercise more or go even into stricter eating which ultimately puts more stress on your body, right? Here's the other problem is that there's not really a clear definition for clean eating. So people are making up their own rules and often losing valuable nutrients in the process. So new at 630, we're going to have some healthy tips to help you strike that balance, Dan and Danielle. Yeah, it's always such a struggle because you want to eat healthy, you want to be conscious of what you're eating, but of course you don't want to go overboard. I go over with the other way. Yeah. Way too often. <laughs> the pendulum swings, that's for sure, especially over the weekend. Uh, still ahead on ABC 15 mornings, hot temperatures and mistakes leading to two tragic deaths right here in the valley. Lawmakers are now taking action in hopes of preventing these hot car deaths. Now we may be starting out with some clouds this morning, but we're under a UV alert, so don't forget the sunglasses and sunblock. We'll talk about when we could see storms in minutes. It's always new and it's always happening right now from the ABC 15 live desk and I got a traffic alert coming in at this very moment. Loop 101 and Raintree details in moments and talk about a major oops. Someone call a cleaning crew because some of these residents are seeing a whole lot of red. The thing is, though, this fire retardant drop wasn't anywhere near the flames. Coming up, you won't want to dodge this deal. I'll explain at 615. You ever gotten the dog out of the bath and you've got that hassle of drying them off? Well, a valley woman says she's got an invention that can make bath time with your pooch a whole lot easier.
social, and stay connected. Follow ABC 15 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Coming up on 615, I want to update you on a developing story here at the live desk. An inmate still on the run at this very moment. This takes us to Alabama. But get this, originally 12 inmates escaped. 11 have now been captured, and they all escaped yesterday from the Walker County Jail. That's going to be north of Birmingham. Their charges range in degree from attempted murder to disorderly conduct. No word exactly how they got out. There's going to be a lot more questions this morning, Dan. Well, it was supposed to be headed to a fire, and instead the C-130 dropped flame retardant, that red stuff, all over homes, cars, businesses. Problem is, this was nearly 200 miles away from a fire. Look at that, all over the cars. A lot of people decided to come out of the shopping center to see what was going on. This is in Fresno, California, very popular strip mall. They found all that red stuff on their cars all over the ground. The Forest Service, Air National Guard, and Cal Fire are now investigating. They have to find out what happened. Why did the plane accidentally drop that entire load there? But the people took it in stride. It's crying over spilled milk. I'll just have to wash my car. It needed a wash anyway, so what's the difference, you know? What a positive outlook. It needed to be washed anyway. Fire officials say the retardant is non-toxic and washing with soap and water takes it right off. Choosing to look at it optimistically there for that man. All right, put that phone down. We know that texting and driving is dangerous, but texting and walking can be too. And now the mayor of Honolulu is taking action to ban electronics in crosswalks. All of this an effort to keep people safe. Uh, it's not just phones on the list, though, either laptops, video games, even cameras. Violators face fines ranging from 35 to $99. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by CenturyLink. You know, that crosswalk uh, well, reminds me the original emoji is the crosswalk symbol. Hey, from the li uh, live desk here, we have everything new and now including a live look at your CenturyLink maps. No major problems valley-wide on our ADOT camera. Look at this. This is going to be the Loop 101 and Rain Tree Southbound lanes. This is going to be the off-ramp. There's some restrictions there for that crash as ADOT's adjusting the camera just a little bit. Not going to affect you on the main line. Speaking of the main lines, let's go to the ABC 15 live drive. Boy, it's out and about. My gosh, look at that view. The sky looks absolutely gorgeous. I know Iris is going to have your forecast in a moment, Danielle. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, as you start your morning routine here, you know, you take a shower in the morning, throw on a robe, maybe you dry off with a towel. You don't really think anything about it, but if you have a dog, you know just how crazy bath time can be. See, I'd have thought you'd do the same thing for the dog. Grab a towel, wrap it Sounds up, you're easy. done. <laughs> a valley woman thinks, you know what, it could be a whole lot easier for you. ABC 15's Justin Pizera has more on her latest invention. It's probably one of the most frustrating parts of washing your dog, trying to dry them off. Now you have to catch them and they're dripping all like this and shaking their heads. And now you have to get them in the towels and one towel's not enough. It's really one of the main reasons Sherry Midland started her company, Dripping Dog. Yes, she invented dog robes. The easiest way to say that is to keep dogs from dripping water all over the house and in my couch and my bed. Sherry was working in real estate when she thought up the idea, so she started researching and measuring different breeds of dogs to make sure the robes would actually fit. She started a Kickstarter campaign to raise the money. Then it came time to actually make them. She opted to have every robe made right here in the valley at Fabric in Tempe, instead of having everything shipped to factories in Los Angeles or even China. I'm in live in Phoenix and I'm an American and I want to keep the dollars locally here and I really want to create jobs. 20% of the profits will go to animal shelters, getting animals off the streets and adopted and maybe into a robe. In Tempe, Justin Pizarro, ABC 15, Arizona. I mean, the photo op alone could be worth buying one of these. I'm sorry, the dog seemed like it was good. That's off of me. I know, I'm tied in here. So the robes, they're not cheap. They cost $69.99. Okay. Uh, but she does have several more products on drippingdog.com if you want to take a look. Looks like they work. Yeah, whatever makes it easier, right? All right. We'll start the week off with the deal of the day, sure to get you off your feet. That's right. Chelsea Davis shows us a place where the kids can play, parents can chill, and your wallet will stay full. I love it. It's this morning's Smart Shopper deal of the day. This deal will make you jump for joy. We're at AZ Airtime on Scottsdale Road in Thunderbird. This place is over 25,000 square feet, catering fun to all ages. They have a 5,000 square foot trampoline, and they have angled walls and a separate spot for the little ones to play. And a foam pit. A little help 
luck getting out of here. And they have two dodgeball courts. If you want to be a true dodgeballer, you got to know the five D's of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh. Oh. And now it's time for me to hit you with the deal. They normally offer buy one hour, get the second hour free on Tuesdays, but smart shoppers, they're offering that deal on Monday and Tuesday just for you. Plus, you'll get a free icy or slice of pizza from their cafe. Normally, a drink or pizza slice would cost close to four bucks. Admission is nine dollars for kids ages six and under and fourteen for ages seven and up. Be sure to mention smart shopper. We're gonna put it online for you, abc15.com slash smart shopper. <laughs> I so to check one of the basketballs at those kids. Yeah. I'm so glad that didn't happen. Yeah. Like, put me in, coach. Put me She's in. She's not that cutthroat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I was staring them She's down in the dodgeball. Yeah. Yeah. It got, it got serious on. in the dodgeball center. But they also have rock wall, too. Parents will love it because they have Wi-Fi. They have massage chairs. Ooh, I like that. The kids are working out without realizing it. And teens on Friday and Saturday, it's 8 to 11 teen night. Fantastic. So fun. And a great way to stay active and be able to do it inside. It's indoors. Yes. Because being active outside is not an option these days, really. Especially with the humidity that we've had in place over the last several days. Now, the bright spot was that yesterday with all that moisture, all that cloud cover, too, we only topped out at 99 degrees. But it was a muggy day, and today the muggy conditions are sticking around. As we start off, we're taking views uh, around the valley. You'll notice as we look out with our Queen Creek camera, we're seeing more of those clouds uh, kind of clearing out a bit, seeing more of that blue sky versus when you're looking out towards the west and southwest with our Phoenix Children's Hospital Valley cam, a little less uh, of the clear sky and more of that cloud cover. Now, you're, the reason you're seeing some of those clouds out to our west and to our southwest is because I'm still tracking some showers in areas to the west and southwest of the Phoenix Metro. And you'll see that on ABC 15 Desert Doppler. Gila Bend, we had some strong storms there. Those storms tapering off, but still some light showers in that area. Also, some spotty light showers southeast of Buckeye and north Northwest of the Loop 303, so just out northwest of Surprise, we're seeing a few very light showers too under some of those thicker clouds. The rest of the valley, all quiet right now. As we go through the day, there's just a 10% chance, especially in that west and northwest valley, of a stray shower here through about that 7 o'clock hour. Then we're quiet through midday before those storm chances go back up. Plenty of monsoon moisture in our state, so today we'll have to watch for a few thunderstorms. Best potential for more widespread coverage will be along the rim, northern Arizona, and the eastern pockets of our state. But watch Futurecast. We could see a storm or two work its way into the Phoenix Metro going into this evening. And that's why, again, we've got that 20% chance for storms today. And notice in the forecast, there's a 20% chance of storms in the forecast pretty much every day through at least Wednesday and again this weekend. We'll talk about storm hazards in just a bit. Okay, thanks, Iris. Coming up on 623, and he has never backed down from a fight. Now, Senator John McCain begins the battle of his life. The plan today as he takes on cancer. Ready to stuff some stockings? Yes, I said stockings. I know it's July, but there's an expert who says now is the time to get going on that Christmas shopping.
are working our way towards 626 on this Monday, and we just had to show you this image. Look at that beautiful rainbow there off in the distance. This is off I-10 and Bullard from one of our many ADOT cameras. Uh, keeping your keeping an eye on the roads for you. We'll check in with Christopher Sign in just a moment from the live desk, but we just had to bring that to you. Maybe it's a sign it's going to be a great day. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> so you may not believe in Christmas in July. It might seem a little early, but what if we told you it could actually save you money? Got to start now. Yeah. You have to think about it. If you start right now, you can save money on the off season items that you're going to buy anyway. I talked to Jim Dew from Dew Wealth Management and he filled me in on many of the other items that you can save on. Don't mind the attire <laughs> there that you just noticed. I it's did. the message that's important. Yeah. Take a look. Buy things when they're off season. You can save a lot of money. Art supplies, school supplies, they go on sale after Labor Day. Right. Right after little, little League season, you can buy certain gifts. So plan ahead and buy off season, and that can save you a ton of money. Can I tell you, the only reason I was concerned with the <laughs> scarf is that it was covering up the microphone. Otherwise, yeah. I'd have left it on. I was so on. confused at first. Why yeah. are you wearing a scarf, Dan? Well, let's say you aren't sold on that. You don't want to start shopping now. Do says you can save instead. Just plan it out. You've got a few months, mm -hmm. folks. If you're like our family, you end up buying stuff anyway. But just mark it down. Write it down. Uh, take your own lunch to work. We talked about yes, that recently. Did. Great way to save money. All right, some good advice. Thanks, Dan. Hey, coming up next at 630, is a new law the answer to preventing kids from dying in hot cars? The proposal that's now on the table after back-to-back -back tragedies here in the Valley. We don't have to mow the grass anymore. We don't have to spend money with um, herbicides. It is tough to keep that turf in Valley cities looking green, but not for long. Glendale is rolling out a program that they think others should follow. It is going to be another muggy day with those dew points staying in the low to mid 60s. We'll talk about what that means for our storm threat in just minutes.